<sighs> okay. Hey, it's that time again. I'm coming to the end. Coming to the end of my pomegranate, pure pomegranate juice. This is still up there. Oh, down there. But I'm going to take the cran rape, a commercial, whatever, you know, got sugar, concentrate, all that stuff. I'm not even going to look at the instructions. I know it's, anytime you have those big conglomerates, this is so interesting, what's happening now, because, you know, the big boys, what they realize, you know, because what happens, put a little pomegranate juice in there, that's for blood pressure. A little, in fact, I'm not going to use the cranberry today. Let me just use the pomegranate and the cranberry. That'd be good. But <laughs> think about it. When the big boys get together, here's what they do. Whenever they start to come to granddaddy, start a company, right? And then all of a sudden they go to start going to the same schools, you know what I mean? They go to the same holidays, you know, they go to Aspen together and go skiing or the ops or whatever it is. And so all of a sudden you meet somebody, you know, or you went to college with something. Well, we'll get to that part. And so, so what happens is you say, hey, I went to the school with that guy. He's, he has a, he, he has a, what, a assault mine? Hey, I got... I got the just I, I got the North American distribution of salt, you know, contract, you know, in my hand. I get together with my roommate who's from wherever, say Peru, whatever. And you know, we can make a little business deal, you know, so I'd be the exclusive distributor of of, of, of you know Peruvian salt, you know, here and blah blah blah, and we all win. But who is winning? Who are we all? Now, if you grew up in the same zip code, you know what I mean? You're the same neighbors, you know what I mean? You, you know, what's, what's that story where, um, who's the guy that's trying to kill everybody these days, that's trying to inoculate everybody and put all kinds of things in there, do some health thing? Um, um, Bill Gates. You know, he grew up, didn't he grow up down the street from the, the guy that owned the Dell computers or something like that? I don't know, talk to somebody about that. Anyway, the point is, his next door neighbor is the... It, it, is whatever because they live in that community where they the cul de sac community. And so when you go to school, now you went to the crush with them, you were there, hung out in the same neighborhood, then you went to the high school, and then you went to the boarding school, and then you went to the ding, the ding, the ding. And so that's your relationship. So anything that happens, you know, you 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 depend on those relationships in your college years or whenever your your formative years to see you through the rest of your life. You see how that works? Well, therein lies the problem. Because it's a big, wide world. And if your distribution system is going to, how do you say, exclude other distribution systems, or, or when something like this pandemic happens, and then you have your, or your you know, the, your pharmaceutical, because you've been ignoring it, your, not your pharmaceutical, somebody in your little circle ain't been doing, you know, they've been saying, well, let me cut this out. All of a sudden, there's an emergency. Now you, now you need what you used to have, but you still got the distribution system, but now you got to wait to get everything, uh, the, uh, how you say, uh, geared up to put in the distribution system. That you, because you, the way you, you figure out what I'm saying. Hold on a second. Anyway, well, okay, so, sorry, so I'm gonna put a little bit more pomegranate in there. Uh, too much, too much grapey, too much cran grapey in there for me. Some pomegranate in there. Okay. Okay, so here's the, so, so, so what's happening now, what's interesting now with this pandemic. It's very simple. You have a situation. Let me put some more light on the case. This is not. Too, I need some light. Yeah, put some light on this case. Here's the thing. We're we're in May. We're we're coming to the middle of May right now. I'm saying the middle of May is here. Whatever. Um, at New York levels have been sort of. They say leveling off. I don't believe none of the things that people say. But then they're supposed because you know everybody's gonna then run out like idiots. <laughs> then it's gonna be well, maybe it won't be. But we're not doing we're not the petri dish. There's other states that are petri dishes, so we'll find out what they do. We'll find out what happens to everybody else. Like let me just follow behind them. But here's the thing. What I've been noticing, people all of a sudden now with all this stir craziness and whatever happened, they're not used to being alone. That's one of the best. I used to travel a lot. When you travel, and you might be alone for like four days, five days, whatever you are, you travel, whatever it is, you know, you're someplace, whatever. When I say travel, I don't mean like a tourist. I mean, I used to travel. <laughs> travel, I mean, really, I'd be, I'm, I mean, one time I was in the, I was living in the jungle. Another time I was living, you know, with the, you know, in a place where I was in the attic with, with vampire bats. I mean, I've been in a lot of places. But what happens after a while, you know, you sort of, I'm going to say revert the type, but you know, 
after you get past your initial whatever, then some at some particular point, while you travel alone, some particular point, you get to the essence of yourself. There's some point of weird truth that you find, you know what I mean? And it changes you. So what I'm saying, now I'm hearing conversations in the street because I don't go out. What I do is I go out, I go out like, uh, today is Monday, it's unusual for me. Usually I go out on like a, like a, a, a Tuesday, Thursday, and like Saturday. And it's three days a week when I just, I go out to walk, I walk all the way over here, do whatever, I walk someplace. Um, but what happens in walk, I'm listening to all kinds of conversation. I was at the, I was in a bank today with my brother because it was a whole kind of drama. I'm going to help my older brother out. So anyway, in there, this woman came in later. But anyway, she got all misunderstanding, started yelling at this guy that she thought was homeless. And, and, and you know, it was like a mess, which goes to the whole class consciousness, too. If you dress a certain way, you know what I mean? People want to be near you because, you know, it's like that. You see what I'm saying? And it gets it gets even worse when you get into mixed communities. Well, I guess white people have their code. I won't say white people, but you know, you have everything where people won't get into the elevator, you know, because it's a small elevator, all kinds of things. And I hear people talk about this stuff, and it's always the same thing. There is a racial difference between or cultural differences between people. <laughs> so anyway, and then all kinds of all kinds of conspiracy theories. But let me let me let me get to the end of this. Let me see, here's what I want to say. What's more interesting to me is not what see, we also wrapped up in the United States. Thing, but I'm trying to look at stuff that's happening all over the world, not all over the world, mainly because of Africa. Because I talk to my wife all the time in Africa and whatever. And you know, first of all, they're serious. See, we're not serious here. They're serious. When I say they're serious, you can't go out. You go out and you get caught someplace. First of all, they reinstituted the pass law as well someplace. I mean, you know, you got why are you go here? Okay, I got to go to King Williamstown for wherever. Whatever the deal is. Right, <laughs> what happens if you go out there? Some place they're serious. I mean, they will shoot you with rubber bullets. You know, what I mean? if, in fact, you're caught without a mask, they fine you two thousand rand. Which don't make no sense to me. If you find somebody money, what you, and if you don't, what they're gonna put them in jail with, with other? How, how you gonna? Why don't you just instead of instead of finding people something? Uh, that's the first instinct. I, I don't think they're gonna do this in the United States. Fine, yeah, I guess they they have to, if they'll find you when you have the mask. No, instead of finding me, why don't you take the money that you gave to the you know to the shipping lines and the airlines and and, and buy the mask for me? <laughs> why are you giving them money? Where's my test? Why are you giving them money first? And you didn't get my test first. Anyway, back to Africa. So here's the thing. There's a, I don't know, you must have, you must have heard it by now. If you haven't heard about it, but, but Madagascar has got this COVID, you know, tonic or whatever, you know, organic COVID thing like, like that. But, you know, other countries are starting to deal stuff. And so, so like, um, and plus they have some sort of technology. They have, they have, they have technology in, in, in Africa, believe me. Go look at Rwanda's tech city and a bunch of other places in, and, you know, Angola and all their money, whatever it is. But I won't get into that right now. But here's the thing. Here's the thing that was so interesting to me, right? Africa is finally saying, oh, no, because there's a lot of young leaders coming up. There's some people that's very vocal because the internet, the African leaders are being called out. What happens is African leaders are starting, they're trying to say, well, they come up, they need to come up with their own solutions. Well, that's what they've been doing. So let's see what happens. And they won't be going through who or, or you or whoever. They're not going for the, for the former colonialists. They're doing this stuff. You know what I mean? Plus, remember, Africa has a very strong thing in um, traditional medicine. In fact, most African places, when I was in Livingston, Guatemala, I had to see the uh, the, the head healer, the head woman woman healer in that area uh, for certain personal problems. I mean, this is the woman, that, that at the time, the president of, of Guatemala, because Livingston, Guatemala, Guatemala, would own, the president's wife would only go to her for treatment. So what I'm trying to say, this is this, this is interesting. Now we got traditional medicine and the pharmaceuticals trying to do a year to do whatever. Then you have your traditional people, rather your you know, traditional medicine as in US medicine or Western medicine, and then you have traditional healers. Isn't that they have medicine, we have healers. That's interesting. Think about that, because you don't call traditional medicine African real. We say we've got to go to traditional either traditional healer, or you gotta go through, you know, a sangoma or something like that. Anyway, I'm trying to be short. So, so, so what happens is that you're gonna have a not. This is just Africa. Remember, uh, you got places like, in, and I'm sure Guyana's got all those herbs or whatever have you. You got all goes to South America. They are, you know, traditional healers in certain areas. They're probably they got this thing knocked. They got this thing knocked. But because the Western people can't make no money off of them, 
<laughs> which the world is changing. So who knows, you know? That Madagascar tonic, you know what I mean? That might be the thing that everybody, well, no, we know at the West, does. they'll come and steal the formula and then do something else with it like they did. Like they did it. Did they ever tell you what happened in India? And it has basmati rice, you know? And anyway, they have a certain rice, right? And then, the U.S. wanted to do that, but but India's got some sort of weird pattern, and you can't do that rice. So then the United States did it, but they called it something else. Believe me, what? Hey, the forces that be will get your money. That's all I got to say. And that's why I should end it right there. Because remember, I'm telling you, I, I, this is uh, May, June, July. By July, we'll sh the, the new world will be shooken out. You start seeing that, that what's going to happen, what's, how beings are going to cope in July. Right about, yeah, right after my birthday. We'll see what happens. Anyway, this little message from me, T, from the Patterson Second Trade in Japan, letting you know what I only suspect from a, a, a reality of the ADOS. That would be the American descendants of chattel slavery. That's what I am. You know what I mean? That's, that's my formal designation. And everybody, as you sit down and you reflect, you start reading the right, start reading some books, reading the right books, then you're going to start reflecting and redefining yourself because things is a changing.